you are more likely to win a Nobel Prize, be struck by lightning, or die falling out of bed than being killed by a shark. Unfortunately, every year a few people are the victims of shark attacks. Now, we are a much greater threat to sharks than they are to us, but maybe if we understand why sharks do attack, rare though it is, we can avoid negative encounters in the future. While some of the reasons for attacks might be well known, other causes might actually surprise you. Before we look at the why, let's look at the who. Out of the 548 known species of shark, only 13 species have bitten humans 10 or more times. Out of these 13, only 3 species have reached double digits in fatalities. For this reason, these 3 sharks are usually considered the most dangerous in the world. They are the bull shark with 117 unprovoked attacks, 25 of which were fatal, the tiger shark with 131 unprovoked attacks, of which 34 were fatal, and of course, the great white with 333 unprovoked attacks, 52 of which were fatal. Now again, putting that into context, more than 100 times that amount of sharks are killed in a single hour. In fact, if you total up all the recorded fatalities from these three sharks ever, it's still less than the number of sharks killed by us in the last 60 seconds. Regardless, if avoiding these three species is a priority number one for you, then you might want to steer clear of certain hotspots. Most shark attacks have occurred in the USA, and mostly in Florida. In fact, in 2020, nearly half of American shark attacks occurred in Florida. Florida is home to many popular beaches, as well as a variety of shark species, including the bull and tiger shark. Next on the list is Australia, with the white bull and tiger shark. And then after Australia comes South Africa, which also has all three species. Apart from having the right species, these places also have the right conditions. All three are popular places for people entering the water, and they are becoming more popular as the populations rise. In fact, though popular media may suggest a slight increase in shark attacks, when adjusting for population growth, the number of attacks might actually be declining. Now, to be clear, that's not to take away from anyone who has been killed or injured by a shark. Losing a loved one to a shark must be devastating to any friends, family, or community affected. And those who do survive still have to live with the aftermath. Intense physical and mental pain can stick with the survivors long after the attack. In 2011, a man named Dave Pearson was attacked by a shark and suffered injuries to his arm. The medical bills were expensive, and after they went above $30,000, Mr. Pearson said he had to stop counting. He founded a charity called Beyond the Bite to help people impacted by shark attacks. As it says on the website, Beyond the Bite aims to help people who have been affected physically, emotionally, or psychologically by shark bite events. Some people have had really rough times, so if you want to help out, I'll leave a link in the description below to the site. Though shark attacks are rare, it would be a big positive to humans, and to sharks, if they could become even more rare. Is this possible? To move towards the skull, we are going to have to examine why they do attack humans. Sharks were here millions of years before us, so people aren't part of a shark's normal diet. Though, sharks are opportunistic hunters. Take for example the bull shark, which will eat fish, marine mammals, birds, turtles, and in some cases other bull sharks. 
They have a wide range, being able to live in salt and fresh water, swimming around the coast and up rivers. They have many opportunities to come into contact with humans. They have a reputation for being aggressive. Some have attributed this to bull sharks having a very high testosterone level, though it seems more research is needed to back up that claim. What they definitely do have is a powerful bite, the strongest of any shark relative to size. Being powerful, aggressive, and hungry, a bull shark could attack a human out of desperation or mistaken identity in murky water. Bull sharks, well, all sharks, can only see in black and white, and while this doesn't necessarily mean they have bad vision, this could cause some misidentification, especially if the shark is in murky water. Tiger sharks are also ferocious eaters, and apparently eat for fun even when they're not hungry. They have the nickname of Trash Can of the Ocean, due to the fact that, along with eating a wide variety of meat and fish, tiger sharks have also been found with cans, books, license plates, tires, and more in their stomach. According to National Geographic and SharkSider.com, while a great white might swim away after tasting human flesh, a tiger shark is less of a picky eater and is more likely to finish you off. Now, most people do survive tiger shark attacks, but percentage-wise, it does have the highest number of fatalities, with 26% of unprovoked attacks resulting in death. Again, attacks by tiger sharks are rare, and I've seen footage and pictures with divers around tiger sharks where the sharks basically ignore the people. There's even a Nat Geo video of tiger sharks being friendly with divers swimming right up to them and being hand fed. Again, humans aren't part of their normal diet, which leads me to think it either comes down to misidentification or desperation. Either they don't realize what they are attacking, or they are too hungry to care. And then there is the Great White. It's the biggest of the three and responsible for the most attacks and fatalities. However, there's something a little strange. Though the Great White has killed the most, percentage-wise it has the lowest number of fatalities. If we look at the record of unprovoked Great White attacks, about 15 to 16 percent were fatal. Bull shark attacks about 21 percent were fatal, and for tiger sharks it's about 26 percent. But why? A 10-foot bull shark has a stronger bite than a 10-foot Great White, but Great Whites can get much bigger and a 20-footer will have a stronger bite. They are large and strong animals with keen senses. So what's the deal? I've mentioned the idea of misidentification. In some cases, a shark may bite a person thinking they are something else. And sure, this probably happens. A shark hunting sees a splashing hand or foot and takes a bite thinking it has come across a fish. However, in more modern times, we don't think this is as common as we once thought. Like I said, being colorblind doesn't mean the sharks have bad vision, and plus, they also have other senses to interpret their surroundings, such as smell and electromagnetic sensors. Knowing this, it is now believed that sharks attack with much more purpose, but if not to feed, then what? The first answer might be territorial. The three sharks are generally solitary species, preferring to be alone, except when mating. They don't have a territory in the same way a land animal might, but they might not like it if another large animal is around when they are trying to get food. Perhaps a bite to let this strange foreign creature know that this is my hunting ground and you should leave. But there is also a less sinister angle. These sharks have a reputation for being aggressive, but they are also curious, wanting to investigate this odd creature in their ecosystem. Sharks' mouths are powerful sensory organs, and they use them to investigate unfamiliar objects. While white sharks can attack with great force, and these forceful attacks can be quite fatal, they have also been recorded attacking in a surprisingly gentle way. Take for example Rodney Orr, who in 1990 was grabbed by the head and dragged through the water by a great white shark before being released unexpectedly. Mr. Orr did need to get stitches and had minor cuts to his face and neck, 
but the shark could have easily done much worse. It seems that this great white was curious above all else. Like a dog picking up a new object with its mouth, sharks use their mouths to investigate new things in their environment. It's why we see the videos of sharks mouthing the sides of cages calmly. They're not attacking, they're investigating. Of course, even if the intent isn't there, having your head stuck in the mouth of a shark is probably still pretty dangerous. Whether it's due to curiosity, hunger, territorial behavior, or a mistake, as humans, we need to be cautious if we enter their domain. There are things we can do to reduce the risk of attack. Swim with a buddy or in a group. Avoid swimming around dawn or dusk, as this is when sharks like to hunt. Don't swim around schools of fish or near where someone is fishing. Try to avoid wearing jewelry, as the shine can resemble a fish to a shark. Also, try to avoid excess splashing, as that could attract a nearby shark too. As a slight side note, please don't get too complacent if you see dolphins or porpoises in the water. This doesn't mean no sharks are around. In fact, there are plenty of videos of great whites casually swimming by a bunch of dolphins online. If you do notice a shark, you should leave the water right away. Again, try and do it in a calm manner to avoid splashing too much and alert anyone else around you that there is a shark and that you should stay on the shore. If you are ever attacked by a shark, you have to be aggressive. If a shark is getting too close, you can try to punch it in the nose, or if it does bite, try to attack its eyes and gills, as these are the weak points on the shark. Causing pain is the best chance of the shark letting go, so keep that in mind. Also, the whole focus of this video has been unprovoked attacks. It goes without saying you shouldn't pester a shark by following it closely, or even worse, by touching it. I think this shark scientist and YouTuber says it best when he says STOP TOUCHING SHARKS! By the way, if you like sharks and aren't subscribed to this guy yet, you should be. This video was about shark attacks on humans, but please do check out sites like Beyond the Bite to see what you can do for survivors. But also while you're at it, please look at some things you can do to help sharks as they are being killed in the hundreds of millions. I'll leave links to both below. Anyway. Thanks very much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.